Welcome to class 6 on uh, power electronics topics in power electronics and distributed generation. Uh, in the last class we were looking at uh, distribution system example and we uh, uh, the objective was to look at the, uh, the sizing the ratings of the protective elements that we would need if we are connecting uh, uh, a facility to a, a feeder. In this case this a fairly large facility being connected to the feeder and you want to look at uh, what should be your rating of the fuse, the circuit breakers etcetera coming back in from the facility. And in the last class we had looked at uh, what is the impedance looking back from the point of common coupling uh, taking the, uh, the connection at the feeder as the point of common coupling to evaluate uh, what should be the what would be the fault current that the fuse would see. Uh, example if you have a, a primary fo winding fault in the transformer essentially th the fuse would need uh, to carry a fairly large current which would only be limited by what is the upstream impedance. Okay. So, we had looked at the values of the uh, of the per unit values of the impedances seeing back from the, the point of common coupling and we were about to look at the distribution transformer and we, uh, we will do that in today's class. So, if you look at the distribution transformer, it is a 2 MV 11 kV slash 415 volt transformer. So, you know your uh, your nominal current level, level in your transformer, your primary current level I primary is uh, 100 amps and your secondary current is uh, 2 point uh, almost 2.8 kilo amps. So, if you look at uh, say taking your overall system base to be your distribution transformer base, then your Z base on your primary side would be uh, 60.5 ohms and if you look at it on your uh, and if you look at the low voltage side your Z base would be 86.1 milli ohms. So, if you are looking at uh, a transformer you are given your transformer percentage uh, 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 reactance and winding resistance you are given X L is uh, 4 percent and your R of your winding is 1 percent. So, essentially this would then correspond to uh, 2.42 ohms on the high voltage side uh, for the reactance and 0.61 ohms on the low voltage side. Uh, on, on the high voltage side, on the low voltage side you would have 3.4 milli ohms and 0.86 milli ohms for the reactance and the winding resistance uh, respectively. Okay. And uh, the base quantities that we would consider for the analysis, the overall analysis would be your transformer uh, quantities. So, your V base for your low voltage side is uh, we will take it as 415 by root 3, this is 240 volts and your S base is uh, 
is 2 m v a and your corresponding i base is uh, 27 8 2 amps and you get your z base So, so 86 milli ohms is your Z base. Okay. So, if you look at it on the high voltage side, your, your uh, base voltage is uh, 11 kV is line to line, your phase voltage is uh, 11 by root 3 that would turn out to be 6.35 kV. Your, uh, S base stays the same, your I base would be uh, 100 amps and your Z base would be 60.5 ohms. Okay. So, depending on from what side you are uh, normal, uh, normalizing, you would have to use the appropriate uh, base uh, quantities. So, if you are, if you want to normalize the, the source side, uh, we calculated the source parameters in the last class, your, your voltage on a normalized basis is, uh, uh, it is 11 kV voltage divided by the 6.35 on the high voltage side is 1 per unit. Okay. So, that is what you would have as the voltage base. And if you look at your source side impedance, your X s is, we calculated this to be 0.87 ohms in the last class and your base quantity is 60.5 ohms. So, this turns out to be uh, 0.14 per unit or 1.4 percent. Okay. If you look at your R s, your R s turns out to be 0.5 ohms divided by 0 0.008 per unit. So, if you compare with the numbers that we had in the last class, your X s and R s as seen by now your uh, reduced power level uh, distribution transformer compared to your substation power level the per unit count quantities is it is actually lower now because you are now changed over to a lower power base. Okay. So, this is what we had mentioned when you change over to a lower, lower power base you would see this effect uh, which is uh, what you notice in terms of those numbers. If you look at the distribution transformer. your your x l and r l stays the same because you are making use of the same uh, uh, the transformer values as the base quantities. Okay. So, your r w so it is it stays the same because your base quantities are uh, related to the transformer quantities itself. Okay. So, the next thing is your internal distribution So, to look at your internal distribution, you have to look at uh, what its uh, quantities are related to. You are told it was 1 percent for your reactants and 2 percent for your resistance, but now that is related to its power rating which was 1 MVA power level. So, if you look at the base quantities for corresponding base quantities that would be 415 square divided by 1 MVA. So, this would be 0.172 ohms. So, your actual x line is 
So, to bring it now to your common base, you could uh, uh, you have to now normalize to your base value of your transformer. So, your x line is now So, you can see that because now you went from a 1 MVA uh, base level where it was specified to a higher base your, your 1 percent uh, reactance of the line now got scaled up to uh, 2 percent because you are going up to a, a large larger base quantity. Okay. So, this is again consistent with so you could uh, either go to the physical quantity and then derive by the actual base quantities or you could use the change of base equation that was uh, mentioned in the previous class. Okay. So, so the next uh, part in this particular circuit is the load. We will assume that the load is a parallel R L uh, load and the load is uh, given to be 0 0.8 MVA, uh, 0.8 power factor lag, 440 volts and we will assume that it is a So, if it was running at uh, 440 volts your load current would be 0.8 Uh, at 440 volts. If you are assuming it is just a R load, now you apply a reduced voltage of 415 volt. So, then maybe your current level will come down to 0.99 kilo amps. Say suppose it was an induction machine, then instead of uh, the current level dropping, it might draw a constant power. So, the current might actually go up. So, you have to ma make the assumptions on about what your actual load is to determine what your current would be. Okay. So, your P load, your actual real power of the load is 0.8 MVA into 0.8 power factor 0 0.64 megawatt and your reactive power of the load is uh, your, your 8 MVA square minus uh, 0 0.64 uh, kilowatt square under square root. So, that turns out to be 0 0.48 MEA. So, if you look at your R and L of your parallel R load, your R load is 440 square divided by So, you determine what you can determine what your R and L is and then if you look at it on your common base on your low voltage side your R, R load in per unit would be 0 0.3025 divided by 86.1 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So, this is 3.51 per unit and your x load in per unit is 0 0.403 divided by your base quantity on your low voltage side which is 86 milli ohms. So, this turns out to be 
seven per unit. So, now that you have all the parameters of your circuit uh, now normalized to a common basis, you could actually then draw a, a final single line equivalent circuit of your system. Okay. So, if you look at your final uh, single line circuit, essentially you have the source which is now uh, its reactance is is J.014, the resistance is 0.008, your fuse F1 is over here and then you have the distribution transformer impedance which was J.04 reactance and resistance of 0 0.01 then you had you then you have circuit breaker 1 followed by your distribution panel which goes to a bank of multiple breakers. So, circuit breaker 2 is also essentially at the same point then you have your internal wiring your Z L which is J 0 0.02 reactance and resistance of 0 0.04 and your load is uh, 3.5 per unit and your reactance is J uh, 4.7. So, now you have the parameters of your circuit on a single line on a consistent base. So, now you could you make use of this to look at what happens if you have a fault at say uh, the distribution transformer or uh, just uh, somewhere along the internal wiring sections or some somewhere closer to the load point. Okay. So, the next thing that uh, we will look at is, so we made use of if you have a fault over here, you could evaluate what the uh, rating of the fuse F 1 needs uh, should be. So, you next need to evaluate what should be the rating for your circuit breaker 1 and circuit breaker 2. So, if you have a fault downstream of your uh, uh, of your transformer, if your distribution transformer essentially this is for your C B 1 comma and C B 2, your I F is by Z of the source plus Z of the transformer. So, if you look at its magnitude, this turns out to be 17.4 per unit, which corresponds to 48 kilo amps RMS. Okay. So, uh, so you get your peak current that you would expect your circuit breakers to interrupt when you have a fault just downstream of your distribution transformer to be 48 kilo amps. And you know what your uh, ratings of uh, the circuit breaker 1 is, it has to carry uh, 2 MVA of uh, load current. So, for your C B 1, your rated current is 2800 amps that is the what it is rated to carry. If your fault current is 48 kilo amps RMS, your V rated is 415 volts and your isolation should be at least twice your uh, rated voltage with some additional margin say you would you could take it as say uh, 2 kV 
uh, might be or 1800 volts might be the standard values that you might get at uh, for this particular voltage. Okay. So, if you look at uh, the circuit breaker 2, the circuit breaker 2 is now rated for feeding a, a, a internal distribution line which is rated to carry 1 uh, MVA of power. So, if you look at your uh, I rated for circuit breaker 2, it is actually now uh, 1400 amps, but your I fault is still 48 kilo amps. Okay. So, you can see that even though the continuous rating of your circuit breaker 2 is lesser, it is fault current that it has to interrupt is the same as the uh, bigger uh, the circuit breaker C B 1. Okay. You are V rated and the isolation voltage stays the same. So, in the circuit that we were looking at, uh, so in fact all the all the devices uh, all the breakers C B 2, C B 4, C B 5 plus any other breakers that might appear in parallel, they might carry uh, potentially lower current levels on a continuous basis, but the sizing to uh, interrupt a fault current is quite large depends on essentially the short circuit current level that can happen immediately after the transformer. Okay. So, the next uh, uh, point at which you would need to calculate uh, a fault is if a fault occurs right at the load then you make use of the, uh, the fault current level at the load to now decide on your circuit breaker 3. right? So, your fault current level is now your 1 per unit of your voltage divided by Z s plus Z of your distribution transformer plus Z of your internal wiring and your magnitude of I f. turns out to be uh, 10.6 per unit. So, this corresponds to 29.4 kilo amps RMS. So, if you look at your circuit breaker 3, uh, it is I rated is now corresponding to your 0.8 MVA load. So, you get a uh, current level of roughly 1.1 kilo amp, your fault current level is 29.4 kilo amps and your voltage rated voltage and the isolation voltage stays the same. In fact, if you lo uh, look at if you look at this particular circuit, you will see that uh, if you look at a breaker, uh, often the ratings of the breaker is uh, related to how much fault current it needs to interrupt because the amount of uh, energy that gets dissipated when the contacts open uh, corresponds to the current that it is trying to interrupt. So, even though C B 4 and C B 5 might be carrying much lower current, the cost can be quite substantial if your current level it needs to interrupt is quite high. So, sometimes people what uh, what they do is they could add say a series inductance uh, with uh, uh, just upstream of the breaker. So, the purpose of the inductance might be to reduce your fault current level. So, the cost of your uh, uh, inductance might be lesser than the cost savings that you incur in your circuit breakers because potentially uh, incoming feeder it might go to a large number of branches. So, there are potentially a large number of breakers. So, you might see suddenly in the wiring inductances being added in some sections. So, this is intended to handle uh, the, the fault current level and manage it to an appropriate level. <coughs>
So, at this particular point we did a per unit an analysis of the system and we calculated the fault current levels. Uh, we did it for a balanced case and uh, some of the assumptions that we had in when we do a per unit analysis, uh, this is a radial distribution, uh, distribution system. So, we do not have loops. So, if you we assume in general that there are no loops in uh, with net uh, transformer ratio gains uh, when you are doing a per unit analysis. And also if you are uh, that is especially the case when you might have uh, auto transformers, tap changes etcetera, you want to ensure that uh, you are doing it at the nominal level. Uh, so, that you do not have circulation within loops. Okay. Also, if you have phase shifters, you have star delta transformers etcetera, again you are assuming that the net phase shift in a loop is uh, uh, adds up to the same irrespective of which direction you are going. So, these are some of the assumptions that you are making and uh, the even the fault current level is a steady state fault current level we are not looking at uh, unbalanced effects at this particular point and to address the unbalanced effects we will have to look at sequence components. Okay. Also we are not looking at the dynamical effects for example, depending on where the fault is occurring and depending on your uh, x by r ratio of the line you can have peak fault currents which are much higher than your steady state fault current levels. So, the dynamic effects are also ignored and what we are calculating is the steady state uh, fall current level. Okay. So, so uh, what we have looked at so far is the is the the a three phase fault and if you want to, to look at uh, uh, unbalanced faults uh, and a common fault is a single line to ground fault, uh, you will have to look at uh, the sequence components. Okay. Uh, again, uh, the sequence components uh, along with uh, on which the symmetrical components analysis is based, one needs to keep in mind that it uh, addresses the unbalanced issue, but it is still a steady state uh, concept. Okay. It is not, uh, uh, so the quantities that you are looking at are still phases, RMS quantities etcetera rather than peak instantaneous values etcetera, which you would need for dynamic analysis to look at what might be the worst case peak current that may be your breaker needs to interrupt. So, if you look at uh, the symmetrical components essentially what you are saying is uh, if you have unbalance your phase quantities might be not equal and not phase shifted by 120 degrees you might have three arbitrary uh, quantities say if you take the voltage your voltage V A, V B and V C might be arbitrary. Okay. And what we are doing is we will take this three phases A, V A, V B, V C and represent it in terms of nine quantities V A 0, V, uh, v A plus, V A minus, V B 0, V B plus, V B minus, V C 0, V C plus, V C minus. So, if you look at it you will think that uh, this is actually a bad way to go you are taking three quantities and you are representing it as nine quantities which is making it more complex. But the main advantage that is there is that uh, this V A 0, v, v A plus, v, v B, uh, V A minus and the B and C corresponding quantities are all related. The V A plus, V B plus and V C plus form a positive sequence group in the sense that V B plus is V A plus with a phase lag of 120 degrees, V C plus is V A plus with a phase lag of 240. If you look at the negative sequence component, your V B plus is V A with a phase lead of 120 degrees and V C minus is V A with a phase lead of 240 degrees. And if you look at V B 0 and V C 0, they are actually equal to V A 0. Okay. So, if you look at the number of independent quantities over here, you really have just three independent quantities. So, you are representing three arbitrary quantities in the phase basis in terms of three quantities on a sequence basis. Okay. 
So, based on what we just mentioned, now if you represent uh, uh, a 120 degree phase shift by the number a small a, uh, your V a is V a 0 plus V a plus plus V a minus. If you look at V b, V b 0 is the same as V a 0, uh, V b uh, plus is 120 degree lagging V a uh, uh, plus which means that it is now a square times V a plus and uh, similarly you will get a times V a minus for the negative sequence value of the B phase uh, quantity and similarly you can write it now in a, a matrix form for your transformation now from a b c to 0 plus minus and because you are now looking at a quantities for uh, all the three phases you could also drop the subscript a and just look at call it v 0 v plus v minus the implicit assumption is that you are referring to phase a when you are looking at 0 plus minus. So, you could write now this in a matrix form as And essentially, in a compact form, you could call this as uh, uh, V A B C is the matrix A times V 0 plus minus. Okay. So, essentially, what you are uh, looking at is uh, a transformation going from A B C to uh, uh, 0 plus minus. If you look at the the determinant of the matrix A, you could calculate that in a fairly straightforward manner. You would get 3 into A into 1 minus A, uh, which means it is non-zero and uh, the matrix is invertible. Uh, in fact, what you have is a linear transformation from a standard basis to a a new set of bases which leads to your symmetrical components. Okay. Yeah, so, so, if you look at uh, 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 the matrix A, if you uh, this matrix A is actually symmetrical. So, you take A transpose would be the same as A. Uh, in fact, you can calculate what your A inverse is. A inverse turns out to be Uh, this particular matrix over here, uh, if you look at what it is, it is actually one third uh, A uh, transpose conjugate. Uh, sometimes people refer to the transpose conjugate as uh, the Hermitian of a matrix. Uh, so, A H is essentially its transpose uh, conjugate. Uh, if you have a matrix which where A inverse is equal to A H, then it is called a Hermitian matrix. Here it is not exactly a Hermitian matrix because you have the factor 1 by 3, uh, but it is nearly Hermitian because your A inverse is related to the uh, inverse transpose of A. And if you take A times A inverse transpose, you would get 3 times the identity matrix. Okay. So, if you look at it in compact form, you can determine your 0 plus minus uh, quantities uh, as one third A H times V A B C. So, this is 
So, the next thing that you could ask is uh, what happens when you look at power in uh, 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 on a sequence basis rather than on a phase basis. So, your power is essentially uh, S is P plus J Q and uh, on a per phase basis this is uh, V A times uh, I A conjugate plus V B uh, I B conjugate plus V C I C conjugate. So, if you write it in a vector form uh, this can be thought of as a multiplication of a row vector uh, times a column vector and the row vector being V A B C uh, transpose and your column vector being I A B C conjugate. So, the dot product of uh, V A B C and I A B C conjugate gives your power. Okay. Now, you could substitute for V A B C and I A B C in terms of uh, the change of basis transformation to go from your A B C uh, reference to your sequence reference. So, you can write V A B C as uh, A times uh, uh, V 0 plus minus and because you have the transpose over here the A moves over to the other side and A transpose is the same as A and if you write I A B C conjugate that is A conjugate times I 0 plus minus conjugate and we know that uh, A A conjugate is 3 times the identity matrix. So, your P plus J Q is now 3 times your uh, V uh, 0 plus minus vector transpose into I 0 plus minus uh, transpose. So, if you just expand this out this is 3 times V 0 I 0 conjugate plus So, if you look at a typical circuit, uh, typical circuit you would have uh, uh, you might have unbalanced loads, but uh, under normal conditions your voltages should not be unbalanced if you want to maintain reasonable power quality to your loads. So, your V plus is the dominant term over here V 0 and V minus should be uh, quite negligible. So, even with uh, unbalanced uh, loads your dominant part of your power comes from V plus I plus conjugate. Okay. So, your positive sequence would determine most of your uh, power in under norm normal conditions. Of course, if you have a severe condition such as a fault then the value of V plus V, uh, v minus etcetera can also become large. So, the next question that you could ask is then what happens when you have impedances and uh, if you look at uh, impedances in the normal uh, per phase basis and then if you look at impedances on a sequence basis how would it uh, transform. So, if you look at uh, uncoupled impedance uh, say V A is equal to Z A I A V B is Z B I B and V C is equal to Z C I C essentially you can write it in a matrix form like this and then you can write your V A B C as A times your V 0 plus minus and your I A B C can also be written. So, this is actually uh, I uh, A B C can also be substituted as A times I 0 plus minus. So, you could then transfer over the A you get A inverse Z A B C times A and if you carry out the multiplication for the matrix uh, this particular matrix of for uh, that is given over here then essentially what you would get is a, a, a fairly full matrix of this particular form which is shown at the bottom of this particular section. So, if you look at this you will feel that okay, this is may not be a good idea where you have a simple nice diagonal matrix and you do some transformation and you end up with a matrix which is uh, full. Uh, you could then look at uh, some simplifications where uh, 
where what happens when uh, say the value z a, z b, z c are equal say in a situation such as that then you know that a property is uh, of the quantity small a is 1 plus a plus a square is 0. So, uh, when a, b, c are equal then the off diagonal terms would drop off again you would end up with a diagonal matrix. Uh, but again this uh, looks fairly simplistic. The more interesting situation is when you have uh, uh, a coupled system where, where you have mutual coupling between the phases. So, So, suppose you have V A is equal to I A times Z S plus I B Z M plus I C Z M. So, now you have mutual coupling from phase B and C into your voltage in phase A and similarly for your B and C phase. So, if you look at your Z A B C matrix you would get Z S, Z M, Z M and if you uh, transform it to your sequence components matrix you end up with something which is actually now uh, substantially simpler so you get z s plus 2 z m 0 0 0 so you can see that uh, you end up with uh, uh, a fair amount of simplification if you look at uh, systems where you have mutual coupling and for many practical power application whether you are looking at uh, uh, machines, transformers etcetera you end up with coupling between the phases and using a, a symmetrical components based analysis you can expect uh, considerable simplification in terms of your circuit analysis where you have a, a diagonalized circuit in your sequence domain whereas in your uh, a phase domain you end up with a full matrix for the impedances. So, if you look at specifically a, a power line, so if you are looking at the sequence models of a power line, your z plus is equal to z minus and this is z s minus z m and uh, from your uh, courses on power systems analysis you would have looked at expressions for how to calculate the reactance of a line. So, you have expressions such as uh, mu naught by 2 pi ln d by r prime d represents the distances between conductors and r prime is a effective uh, radius. Uh, so, if you look at uh, a situation where you are looking at uh, the distance between conductors in an overhead line, the distance between the phase conductors might be small, but then if you look at the height of the line above the ground, what you might need to consider for a phase to uh, single phase line to ground fault your z naught you will end up with a much larger value of uh, distance compared to what you have for your positive and negative sequence uh, components which flow uh, flow within the lines themselves. 
So, you end up with z 0 which is typically greater than z plus. So, if you look at a typical number for a line you would see things like such as x 0 uh, divided by x plus is at around 3. So, it gives you a higher 0 sequence impedance compared to your uh, positive sequence impedance for your uh, line. If you look at a transformer, your z plus is equal to z minus, uh, your z 0 depends on the type of your uh, construction and the transformer configuration. So, for example, if you look at uh, 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 transformer, you are familiar with a core type or a shell type transformer. So, if you have a shell type transformer and if you have a, a zero sequence uh, flow that can flow in one of the windings, uh, the windings of the primary or secondary winding of the transformer, essentially you will end up with a zero sequence flux and the return path of the zero sequence flux is essentially the same uh, core, the same path as for the positive or uh, negative sequence. So, you end up with similar uh, impedances for your zero sequence as for positive or negative sequence. Whereas, if you look at a transformer which is of core type, uh, what is shown over here is uh, uh, what is uh, in the white is the core and the hashed and the V V lines correspond to the primary and secondary windings of the transformer. So, if you have again uh, currents that can flow through the winding uh, which can lead to a zero sequence flux. Now, the zero sequence flux are going up on all three limbs of the transformer. Essentially, the path for it would now be through the air rather than through a magnetic path. So, in one case you would see a large air gap. Uh, so, you would end up with uh, uh, essentially a much different value of your zero sequence impedance. Also, it depends on say for example, you take this core uh, type and you put it in a in some sort of a cabinet or an enclosure. So, you might have uh, walls of the enclosure which is sitting nearby and the uh, flux that comes out of the transformer might now uh, interact with the cabinet or the enclosure and cause heating or hot spots on the surface. So, depending on your application, if you want to have zero sequence flow in your windings, it may be preferable to look at shell type or if you want you could look at uh, single phase transformers connected in the appropriate configuration. Uh, uh, so, so, the type the value of the zero sequence impedance depends on the type of transformer that you are using and whether you should be using such a transformer in in case in the first place at all. What is shown over here is the core and shell type for three phase. You can also have core and shell type for single phase also depending on whether the windings are enclosed by a core on uh, all three sides or whether the windings are sitting on the two limbs of a single phase transformer. Okay. So, depending on the on the on the transformer configuration and also depending on the winding type, you can have different uh, uh, impedances for the transformer. So, what is shown over here is uh, say a uh, uh, YY transformer where both the Y points are grounded. So, if you look at the, the positive and the negative sequence, uh, uh, model going from your primary to the secondary. Uh, if you now do a per unitized analysis, essentially the transformer becomes transparent. So, essentially you are modeling the 
leakage inductance and the winding resistance. The leakage inductance term is the dominant term. So, you might call the impedance as Z L uh, and you use the same Z L in your model for both positive and negative sequence. When it comes to 0 sequence, you will have a Z 0 and uh, your Z 0 would roughly be equal to your Z L. Okay. So, for a grounded y y transformer, uh, your, uh, your uh, 0 sequence impedance turns out to be the same as what you had for your uh, positive or negative sequence. If you look at uh, say other configurations, uh, say if you have say uh, uh, ungrounded y, uh, you can have a grounded y on the secondary or it can be even ungrounded. Essentially what you would have is the positive and negative sequence circuits stay the same as what we discussed uh, previously, but the 0 sequence circuit is now open. Uh, so, essentially this would not allow 0 sequence current to flow through the circuit. Essentially, in this uh, model, we are neglecting the magnetizing branch and the core loss branch, assuming that its value is much larger than 1 per unit. So, the so it can be neglected. Okay. So, for 0 sequence, practically you have now an open circuit, uh, even if you take one grounding off from uh, one of the y points of the transformer. If you have now uh, uh, y delta type of transformer. Now, uh, if you ground the y point, now from your primary side, essentially you now have a path for your zero sequence current to flow. So, you have now z naught connected back to your return on the primary side on your y side, but on the delta side there is no path for the zero sequence to flow. So, it is open on the delta side. Okay. If you have uh, a, a grounded y delta and if you are grounding through a impedance z n, essentially now your 0 sequence currents coming through the individual phases would sum up you will have 3 i 0 now flowing through this particular impedance. So, essentially the model would be uh, z 0 plus 3 times the impedance that you are uh, connecting to the neutral point and your secondary side stays open. So, uh, depending uh, in this case say when you look at your uh, positive and negative sequence model, the impedance wise it st still stays the same, it is still the uh, dominated by the leakage inductance. Uh, you have to keep in mind what the phase angle is going to be uh, between your uh, primary and secondary voltage. In the next class we will take a uh, look at uh, the phase angle uh, depending on your winding configuration you can have different uh, phase uh, relationship between the angle between your primary and secondary. Uh, we look at it uh, what are the possibilities with a standard uh, y y or delta delta or delta y type of configuration in terms of phase relationship between your primary and secondary winding. Thank you. Thank you.